All right, it's now time to turn our focus to cricket right here on the Sports Max Zone. Well, day one of the third and final test between England and the touring West Indies closed on a positive note for the Windies bowlers in Birmingham earlier today as they snatched three quick wickets. Windies won the toss and elected to bat first as skipper Craig Brathwaite and Mikhail Louis put up a 76-run opening partnership. But once again, wickets began to collapse with five wickets falling for the next 39 runs. Jason Holder and Joshua De Silva steadied the ship with a 109-run partnership for the sixth wicket. But once De Silva went, there was little resistance as the Windies batters who finished their innings all out on 282. Gus Atkinson was the pick of the English bowlers, taking 4 for 67. And the Windies wrapped up the day with a commendable bowling effort removing both openers to leave England on 38 for 3 at the close of play. Well, Jason Holder had a good all-round day for the West Indies, scoring a well-played 59 before taking two catches at slip in the final session. Here's what he had to say after day one. Yeah, when you look at the, the pace of the wicket, you know, you would think batters would pretty much get in and go deep. Um, unfortunately, none of our batters were able to do that. Um, but, you know, we had a fair few starts. But I guess it was a bonus day. A bonus at the end did for us, you know, getting the three wickets. Um, and I really set the tone for, for what's to come. You know, I think the game is setting up to be a really nice one. And any time you get <clears throat> as many wickets as we had on the first day, you know, it always sets up to be something, you know, quite exciting. But I think the pitch is still pretty good for batting. Um, and, you know, we, they've, they've got two quality players at the crease at the moment, which we've got to dismiss uh, and then get into the lower to middle half. Well, as usual, I'm so curious to get the thoughts of Fazir Mohammed on what was, I'll say, a fairly good day of test cricket. He joins us now. Good afternoon, Faz. How are you doing? Not, not too bad at all, Mariah. Yes, it was an intriguing day and uh, it, it really is going to hinge on how the West Indies start uh, day two of this test match. Yeah, and Jason Holder said it himself, you know, getting those three wickets now sets the tone for what happens for day two. And Faz, you know, I felt as if for once in, in some time that I w actually wanted to see the Windies bowl for a little more time. Yeah, I, th I think everyone, certainly the, the mood was with the West Indies. Uh, the yeah. catches were taken, uh, Jason Holder leading the way with, with two. Uh, well, one was a, a little more straightforward. High to his left, he's a tall man. You would expect him to take that. But the, the other one, uh, the one that he took low down to get rid of the night watchman or the intended night watchman, Mark Wood, was a, a really excellent one. And that's after a number of catches were put down, including by himself at Trent Bridge. Uh, it was good to see the West Indies so sharp in the field and taking the chances that came their way. So the, the new ball is still relatively new. It's been swinging about and it's really imperative for the West Indies bowlers, all of them, to be on song, to be as sharp as they are. Alzari Joseph is one away from becoming the 24th West Indian male to take 100 test match wickets. That's a landmark in itself. But more than that, as, as uh, Jason Holder just mentioned in a snippet from that uh, post-play interview, uh, the pair at the moment at the crease right now, Joe Root and Oli Popo, both got hundreds in that Nottingham Test match. It, it's really going to be a key period of play as to whether or not the West Indies can separate them early and get deeper into the England batting tomorrow. Yeah, and a quick word on the 282 all out. Again, you know, I saw players getting starts, not capitalizing on it. But, you know, those partnerships that we really have to recognize and commend. Jason Holder was a patch of one. Then we had Craig Brassweed finally giving us a glimpse of what we know he can do with a bat. But apart from that, you know, again, us giving away our wickets as if we really don't want it. Indeed. Uh, credit uh, to not just Craig Brathwood. Let's not forget uh, that in, in an opening partnership, it's two. And even though Mikhail, Mikhail Louis again got out in the 20s, uh, this, this time for 26, he played his part in an opening stand of 76. So it means the West Indies, three consecutive opening partnerships in excess of 50. It may not be spectacular, but it's, it's a lot better than he had previously. And now it's really for Mikhail Louis to take it up a notch, get past 50, get to 100, and really cement a spot in the West Indies at the top of the order together with Craig Brathwood. Again, yes, as you said, Brathwood played his part a couple of 40s in Nottingham and then getting a 61 here. And then that, that middle order collapse. Uh, the three, four, and five, that continues to be a concern.
concern as far as the consistency and also the man in which they, they got out. But again, thankfully, Jason Holder, uh, Joshua De Silva, so it's Brathwaite, Holder, De Silva, the three really experienced players in a generally inexperienced batting lineup doing the job once more. In the end, 282 didn't seem to be enough for a team batting first, but it's now been put in context with England losing those three early wickets. And, and, and again, we'll have to wait until tomorrow to really see how that rolls out as far as England's response. And something else, uh, Faz, that Jason Holder said post-play, um, he credited Jaden Seals and Azari for how well they bowled uh, late in that final session. Um, how well did they bowl? They bowled extremely well, and, and that's the thing. Uh, Jaden Seals, to, to be straightforward, didn't start well. His first over was all over the place. One was wide outside the off stump, one was a bit too straight, one was wide on the leg side and proved very expensive. Zach Crawley capitalized. But once he found his rhythm and found that, that ideal line, that's when the, the breakthrough started to arrive. Uh, Crawley went for a big drive and edge to slip. We uh, saw Ben Duckett inside edge onto the leg stump. And, and indeed, uh, that was Alzari Joseph's 99th test wicket. And then a similar line, similar angle, similar pace. Again, bowling seam up and getting the wicket of Mark Wood. The, yes, it's only a low order player, but it's still another wicket. And, and that's the important thing, Lance. And, and what West Indies have not been able to do uh, so often in Test match cricket is to be consistent, whether with the bat or the ball. And that short period of play, they were consistent enough to show what was possible. Yeah, all right, fans, we're going to leave it there. Thanks a lot for linking with us. Um, we'll talk again on Monday, I'm sure. But as you correctly pointed out, although the West Indies have the Englishmen on the ropes at the moment, uh, Pope and Root are potentially um, destructive batsmen who can, you know, resuscitate England's position in the game. So we'll see what happens on uh, the second morning. Thanks, Paz. You're more than welcome. And indeed, it's good to see that the rain is actually in Paris for the Olympics and not at the cricket, so the game can continue. <laughs> Okay, that's Fazir Mohammed, the great one from TNT. And we'll be back with more on the Sportsmax Zone after this.